welcome this panel, um, which is basically about how the internet is going to affect politics and to uh, have citizens engage in uh, politics. And we have uh, three people on our panel um, who are going to represent, whether they like it or not, three different countries, the United Kingdom, uh, Spain, and France. Is that a phone? It's huge. Um, so basically, we have three countries, uh, near countries. I'm sorry with the mic microphone. It's extremely annoying. Um, and so we have three countries, uh, three European countries, uh, who are neighbors, to say the least and who have a very, very different uh, evolution of their politics regarding how the internet affects the, uh, the politics and how collaborative practice affects the politics. So uh, we're gonna start with what is, at least from a French point of view, uh, the most exciting and uh, um, mesmerizing thing happening in Europe right now, beside Greece, uh, which is Spain. And, uh, well, to introduce Spain, uh, Mayo here, representing uh, Spain and Podemos, uh, let me just tell you that in France, uh, we don't know much about Spain, uh, and unless you speak Spanish, there is no available information on what's happening in France. It's extremely difficult to have any valuable information about Spain. So my first question will be, what the heck is happening over there? Shall I do a pres my yeah, presentation? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And my slides? Okay. So um, I am, uh, as presented, I am Mayo Fuster. I came from uh, Barcelona. And I am going to present uh, uh, the case of uh, Spain. And uh, basically, uh, in Spain, we have had, uh, in 2011, the, eru the eruption of the yeah. Indignados mobilization, which has been the largest uh, social mobilization sin since the country. Um, uh, since the country uh, transitioned to democracy. So Spain was a dictatorship. In, in 78, we went into democracy. And at that moment, uh, it, uh, it was created uh, a set of uh, political parties that have been governing Spain since then. Uh, then we arrived at 2011, I was say, as I was saying, and um, we get the, the mobilization of, are you seeing my slides? But I don't know which one, no? Is the first one? <laughs> so let's go to the second one. Uh, so in, in 2011, we have the larger uh, mobilizations uh, in the country, uh, in, in our democratic uh, history. Um, and since then, uh, we saw the increase of uh, collaborative uh, practices. Uh, there is a study by Manuel Castells in which you can see that uh, the, the increase, exponential increase growth of alternative banking, for example, the number of people who has changed their, uh, their account from uh, 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 one of the banks that was uh, uh, rescued by the government to uh, ethical banking. Or if you see the evolution of the cooperatives, you also see an increase of cooperatives. So there has been, since 2011, an increase of uh, collaborative uh, practices. This uh, uh, end up in uh, this year, 2015, in which is called the year of change, because uh, uh, we might be in front of a huge institutional change uh, in uh, comparable to the one we have with the transition to democracy, in the sense of we might have uh, see uh, that parties who has been created only during the last year uh, are able to gain uh, the elections. Uh, this year we have three type of the three uh, type of elections we have. Uh, municipal election this Sunday. We have uh, a regional election, also um, in many regions this Sunday, but uh, others are going to be later. And we also have national elections. So this year is the year of change because there is the possibility that uh, many new parties and parties who came from the Indignados uh, mobilization and connected to social movements uh, are able to gain uh, uh, the different elections. Uh, to give you just an example, in Barcelona, there is the, the candidature Bar Barcelona in the Commons, is called it, 
and uh, uh, his leader uh, is a, a former squatter, uh, and uh, it has been the leader of the movement uh, defending the right to have a housing in Spain. And uh, at the moment, according to the polls, we might win next Sunday. So this is the current uh, uh, situation. Also in terms of Podemos, the polls are also uh, pointing at about uh, uh, good possibilities, uh, even if it's, uh, it's difficult, but uh, at the national uh, level. So I'm going to point to four lessons uh, emerging from the Spanish case. I'm not going to describe more. I'm just going to give four lessons that I uh, take from the Spanish case. We go to the next slide. And, um, okay, so four lessons for who, for what, I mean. So I, it's really simple. It's about, yes, human rights. I'm not going to make a discourse about politics and, and uh, ideology. Just everybody having uh, the rights of education, everybody have uh, health, everybody have housing, everybody having food. I mean, really, really basic uh, elements. Uh, so four lessons that we take from the Spanish case for this uh, political goal. First one. Uh, uh, I call it the CC effect. So the CC effect uh, is that everything started from an uh, uh, attempt by the government to repress collaborative practices. So uh, in 2010, before that the indignados started, the uh, Spanish government tried to approve a law that was called uh, sin de law, like it's like the SOPA law in the United States or the SOPI law here in, uh, in, uh, in France. The government tried to approve this law and the, the free culture movement and the, the commons movement uh, make a campaign against it, didn't, want the, didn't uh, have the effect expected, so decided that if we are not able to uh, impact into the policies of, uh, of the internet, um, and, and um, we are going to move into changing actual the political system. This uh, CC effect of moving from only activists into your area of free culture and digital commerce into uh, moving into change the political system, it was not new. If you remember uh, Lawrence Lessig, which is one of the uh, proponents of the Creative Commons license, in 2008, he say, I'm not going to do anything more about Creative Commons. I'm not going to do anything more about free culture because there is nothing we can do more uh, if we only focus into this area. We need to change Congress. So Lawrence Lessig say, move from Creative Commons to change Congress. This is why he's called it the CC effect. So in Spain, uh, happened the same. The free culture movement, uh, actors uh, focus into uh, uh, adopting a strategy to gain uh, and occupy the institutions and uh, make a campaign, it was called do not vote them, meaning do not vote the parties that were promoting the sin the law, that wanted to repress collaborative uh, practices. And they have a huge impact because actually that was the starting point of the uh, indignados mobilization, one of the starting points, the housing was another one, very important one. But if you see the indignados mobilization, there are many elements that came from the free culture and collaborative practices. The, in the organizational form, evocate many organizational logics that came from collaborative uh, practices. So uh, the, the, the lessons to extract from uh, the first uh, effect, the CCC effect, is that uh, collaborative culture has a huge political uh, impact. So if where we are now, what we are, the people who is doing here, and uh, uh, here we say, well, the people who is involved in collaborative practices decide to go into the, uh, and occupy the political system, has a huge uh, political potential. This is the first lesson I want to point you, uh, extracted from the Spanish case, uh, due to the role of the free culture movement into the starting of the indignados mobilization. The second uh, lesson, it's called the, the Wikipedia uh, lesson. So there was a study done by uh, uh, Meco Hill. So basically he analyzed why in 2001, when Wikipedia started, Wikipedia had a success in contraposition to the other uh, attempts to build a collaborative encyclopedia. At that time, in 2001, there were nine 
attempts to try to do something uh, similar to, uh, to Wikipedia. But why Wikipedia achieved and the other ones attempted didn't? So the, the, the conclusion is that Wikipedia uh, is very innovative in the, in the method, in doing a wiki, in doing it in a collaborative manner, but is super conservative in the concept. It's an encyclopedia. Everybody understands what is an encyclopedia. It's something that evocates easily uh, what it means. If you say, I'm going to do the zoom, let's do the zoom of the whole uh, knowledge of the world, it's difficult to get. But if you say, it's an encyclopedia, it's easy to get. So this element of being very innovative in the form, but being very conservative or non-innovative in the, in the discourse, in the concept, is the second lesson. And I am referring to this because uh, in, uh, in Spain, uh, if you see the, the political parties that has adopted an internet and innovation identity, they, they went really bad. So they, did, they were not able to, go, to get good uh, electoral uh, results. So parties like the Pirate Party or parties like the uh, Partido X who, who very much uh, have an identity connected to internet culture and, and to innovation, they are very good and inspired uh, Podemos and inspired in Barcelona in Común, but they don't convince uh, people. They don't uh, win elections. And um, this is uh, uh, to point... This is to point that, yes, collaborative culture and innovation is very good to be adopted for the, for, as a form uh, in the way and the methodology, but in the discourse, it should be a discourse that should be very, very easy to get, very popular, actually, and very, uh, and, uh, somehow, uh, the, the battle is about popularity, becoming popular and gaining hegemony. It's a question of hegemony and common sense and getting a discourse that is easy to connect to population that d even don't, don't, don't get a sense about, uh, and doesn't get uh, excited about uh, internet and new technologies, and, uh, and connect with uh, feelings. So connect with the feeling of anger against elites, it's a very simplistic, it's 99% uh, of the people against the 1% the is the, like everyone, the people against the, the elite. In Spanish we say the casta. It's also another very important feeling is the feeling of optimism, transmitting optimism, that, that collaborating, we can do it. Actually, that's the, 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 the slogan, that we can do it. And the metaphor is we are a commons, we are the common people. So again, very radical methodologies, very collaborative, but very simple discourse, very uh, popular and about getting the hegemony of uh, uh, basic common sense. The, the third one is... TV is back. So this is uh, just to point you to an anecdote. If you talk to the people who uh, start to get very active with uh, Podemos, uh, and they were not involved in social movements before, but uh, new people knew, uh, that were not uh, actively in tech before, many will tell you. So basically, I saw uh, Pablo Iglesias, which is the leader of Podemos, I saw Pablo Iglesias in TV, and I like what he say. So this element of uh, connecting through TV has been in, in very important for the rising of, uh, of uh, Podemos. And uh, the TV, was a TV that was controlled, so the, the, the showman of the TV was Pablo Iglesias. And now the leader of the party that might gain elections is the same showman, is Pablo Iglesias. So the element of uh, uh, the importance of TV, again, is back, the importance of controlling your own uh, means, which also uh, point about that the monetary resources are less important when the technology is uh, uh, accessible. When you can build your own t TV, uh, it's less important to have a lot of resources to win a, 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 an election. So it's not, don't worry if you don't have many monetary resources. Actually, there are studies that point that collaborative economy, is, it has much less monetary flow than the traditional uh, economy. So uh, being able to inject uh, uh, collaboration, but not, don't worry about the uh, monetary uh, resources. Also, the, 
another um, element is that because we have moved from a writing internet to a visual internet, this also has class implications. Previously, the, the, it was possible to mobilize through internet and the social movements connected to internet mobilization were much more middle class, high educated because it involved writing and writing discourse. Now, because it's visual, uh, Podemos has arrived to low class and low educated uh, 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 people. And this is important to ask also, collaborative economy is about only middle class, highly uh, uh, privileged, uh, well, highly privileged, highly educated uh, people, or do we want also to involve collaborative economy to uh, uh, low class uh, people? And this is uh, because it has a huge, huge potential if we are able to arrive not only to middle class. Last, uh, this is a top-down uh, mov movement and party. It's both top, it's not bottom-up, it's top and down. It's not bottom-up, it's not top-down, it's, th it's both top, it has a, a very, very, very strong leadership and a very, very strong base. There is not intermediation, there are not intermediary, but very strong top and very strong down. And this is very similar to the type of leadership of the of free software, for example, with Richard Stallman, or with Wikipedia, with jo uh, 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 Jimmy Wells, now Pablo Iglesias for uh, Podemos. But it would be uh, a mistake to think that it's only top because there is a strong top. No. In reality, uh, it's uh, the, the law of the power law. I, I, I don't know if you are uh, familiar with it, but all the studies that has been done in collaborative communities online show that there is a very strong um, uh, the, um, uh, the, uh, an equal distribution of participation that is very repeated in all the communities, which is called power law. It means that 1% uh, of the community has a strong involvement and, and produce most of the content, and 9% only produce uh, uh, and inject uh, weekly, and a 90% almost don't contribute. It's, it act like the audience. But it's a mistake to think that only the 1% are important, but actually the ecosystem of different degrees of involvement is necessary for the process. Thank you. So it's quite astonishing seeing that from France because, well, for example, one of your examples was uh, people getting out of banks because the basically your income and your taxes were financing banks. We have a very similar situation in France right now. And I guess that nobody even considered leaving the Société Générale. Did anybody here consider it? One. Well. You can see the difference. Uh, I think we can sum up maybe uh, many uh, French uh, view on Spain as simply jealousy because nothing's happening in our country and quite amazing things are happening in Spain. And uh, I think what you're witnessing right now in Spain uh, can be called disruption, major disruption in the way politics are, are, are moving. Uh, whereas your neighbor, Kilvar here, uh, is witnessing something very different. It's more like an evolution. Can you talk uh, uh, about that? The, 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 the way collaborative um, way of sharing, collaborative way of working is transforming politics in the United Kingdom right now? Yeah, sure. Um, firstly, my name's Kulvir Ranger, and I just want to thank WeShare for bringing me here and bringing you guys here, because I think this is quite a remarkable gathering. Um, I've been involved in politics, I've been involved in delivering infrastructure, I've been involved in changing cities for almost 20 years. And yes, I am that old. Um, and this is something that I hope can inspire people to do more because it is about disruption, it is about change. Now, we've heard about some of the challenges that are going on in Spain, but in the UK, it's maybe not as challenging a political environment but there are still challenges that we have to deal with. But I'm not going to talk about those directly. I'm going to give you some practical examples to just think about before I come back to the political point. Um, can all of you close your eyes? Trust me, I'm not going to do anything weird. Close your eyes and think of a street, just an average street, which comes to a junction. As you come to that junction, there are some traffic lights. On that junction, there's also a metro station. There's a bus stop. There's cameras 
that are speed cameras to stop cars going too fast. There are barriers on the street to stop pedestrians crossing, but are only at the crossing point. There are yellow lines painted to stop cars to park, but there are red lines painted as well. There may be there's some blue lines for the cyclists as well. Then there's security guards walking along. They're not security guards. They're officers. But they're not police officers. They're mobility officers. They're there to help your mobility or to give you a ticket if you break any of the rules on that street. Do you like that street? You can open your eyes. That was what I was presented with, a picture of that exact street on the front cover of a business plan that Transport for London presented to me in 2008. I had just been asked to work for the Mayor of London, Boris Johnson, as his transport advisor. TfL has a very large budget. It spends about eight to nine billion pounds a year on infrastructure in London, transport infrastructure. So it has a huge impact on the lives of people and the way that city looks and feels. Now, if the front cover of their business plan looks like that, and they're quite proud to put that on the front cover because they're saying, this is utopia, this is the perfect world. I'm reacting to that and saying, I don't think people want this. I don't think this is the right thing. Now, what I'm describing is politics and bureaucracy coming together. So when we talk about disruption, it's not just politics that is going to be disruptive. You have to get involved in politics to disrupt the bureaucracy. That's why I got involved. I spent um, a decade in management consultancy. And that sounds awful when you say those two words, management consultancy, right? You're all kind of like, ugh. But I got involved to do things, to make projects. I would refuse to work for clients who basically asked me to give a presentation or write a report. I wanted to fix things. I wanted to improve things. I was very lucky to work on something that you may have heard of called the Oyster Card. It's the smart card platform that the metro system in, the, in London uses, and it enables you to be mobile and go on buses and tube trains and everything else with this platform, with a card. And I spent two and a half years developing and working on that and delivering it. What it was doing was opening up the way the city works. But there was a huge fear when you deliver that kind of technology. And it's a fear for politicians and for bureaucrats and for people because suddenly you could find that you knew where people were going. We were about to change the way we thought about people and we were about to do that thing which you've heard so much about, which is collect data. Now this is about 2000 I'm talking about. We launched the Oyster Card in 2003. But at that point, there was a real fear. How, you'll know I went from the office to home or home to the office, or maybe I didn't. You're gonna know these things. What are you gonna do with it? So we promised, like good bureaucracies and good politicians, to never, ever, ever share that information. Hide it, lock it away, keep it under wraps, make people feel secure and safe that you know, their data wouldn't go anywhere. Then you fast forward a decade, and now I'm sitting in the mayor's office, and I'm getting everybody knocking on my door saying, I want the data. I want to do gamification. I want to have rewards from companies to individuals saying, give me my data, give me my Oyster information so I can monetize it, use it, play with it, model it, do whatever I want to do with it. Within a decade, we've gone from a position where politicians and bureaucrats are trying to do the right thing for people because they've been told by people secure our data to 10 years later, people are saying to politicians, hey, you're doing the wrong thing, give me my data. So the example there I'm trying to show is how people change through technology and how politicians and bureaucracy has to change as well. And they have to feel comfortable with that. Believe you me, no politician and not TfL felt comfortable about releasing that data. It's still a debate about how do you give people access to their own information. But this is the challenge going forward because the challenge of politics is about staying in tune with the people. They haven't stayed in tune in Spain. This is why I believe some of the reaction you're getting is happening in Spain because the politicians have lost the contact. They lost what people wanted, what they were saying. And when they did say something, they didn't probably respond to it. 
In the UK, I like to think we do more. Now, I'm going to say something that's probably going to make you guys think, oh, I didn't like this guy originally, now I really don't like this guy. I'm a conservative. As a conservative, I come from the center-right of UK politics. But it doesn't translate across geographical boundaries. Where the center-right is in the UK may not be the same in Spain and in Greece and everywhere else. But I got involved in politics because I wanted to change things. I wanted to help bureaucracy and politicians understand the link with what people were actually experiencing. I've given you a couple of examples of, a, of the Oyster card and of a street that didn't look very good, right? But now, if you go to London, uh, and I'm assuming most people in here are French, is that right? Yeah? No? All right, some people are. If you go to London, if you're French, you'll probably go to South Kensington because it's got a huge French community. It's a French quarter of London. Even if you're not French, go to South Kensington. It's a beautiful area of London. But there you'll find a road called Exhibition Road. It's a very famous road. It's an old road. It was made by Queen Victoria and her husband, Prince Albert, to celebrate an exhibition that was held over 150 years ago, I think. But it's got the Royal Albert Hall at the top, and it's got the Natural History Museum at the bottom, and in the middle, it has about 17 or 18 world-class institutions and museums. That road is now one of the largest shared, spaces, shared space roads in Europe. Does anyone here know what shared space is? Few people, you might have studied architecture or something. But shared space is where you take the road away, you take away the curb, and you put everything at a same, at grade level, and you have a mixture. And people, cars, cyclists, everything move together. It may sound unsafe. It's actually proved that it is more safe because people start to take more of an awareness of what's going on around them. That's the kind of road, that's the kind of city that I wanted London to be. And with the help of the mayor and his political capital, we delivered that. We didn't deliver a world divided and fractured and ruled and telling you what you can do and what you can't do. You want to free it up. But if you want to make that change, if you want to do that, you have to get involved in the political system. I know we want to shout against politics sometimes and say it's broken and say it doesn't work and say it's not doing the right thing for people. There is one way by demonstrating, by rising up, by creating political movements. But in the UK, I felt as personally that I'd get involved, that I'd try to educate from within. Both paths are good paths. I've chosen that path. One final thing I want to say, though, is diversity. I look around this room, and I look around the festival, and I don't see a hell of a lot of diversity. It's kind of like the obvious thing in the room, OK? So I'm a Sikh. My parents are from India, but I'm born and bred in London in the UK. However, we do need to bring more diverse people into our debates. Sometimes they think it's not for them. They think it's not right for them. They think there are barriers for, to entry for them. I know this is probably one of the most open festivals you can have. You're probably welcoming anyone to come in. So let's just, if there's one message I want you guys to take away, is next time, if you do something like this, bring someone who would never, ever come here. Because it's very easy to reinforce herd mentality and come with the people who will always come. Bring someone who wouldn't come. And I'm really glad that we share is doing this, and I, I would like to come again and again and meet more and more of you guys, and happy to take questions. Or by all means, tweet at me. It's at Kulve Ranger. Thank you. Thank you. I, I... You definitely got a point when it comes to the diversity. We have a huge, major, major problem in France with that, although it's a totally different topic. Uh, one thing I, I really spotted in your speech was that uh, politicians getting out of sync with the population um, in every country, basically, uh, led to politicians taking, uh, grasping the collaborative techniques and ways in order to get in sync again in the UK, uh, people grasping collaborative techniques in order to kick out politician in Spain, and and now we're going to talk about France. Take a microphone. Uh, in France, we have a huge problem when it comes to uh, synchronization between politics and the population, 
And still, there is nothing, nothing much, coming out of the population grasping collaborative in order to regain power for the people in politics. Uh, what's your view on that? Wow. Hi. Uh, it's a big question. Um, uh, Julien <laughs> is a French politician, by the way. Uh, yeah. You're in the, the Green Party? Uh, I'm, uh, I'm spokesperson for the French Green Party. And uh, I'm also an, uh, with, I think you say, uh, you'd say, elected official, like the MP for the region, the beautiful Ile de France region. Uh, but uh, I'm also an activist on uh, housing, opening squats, and working for uh, social rights and, and so on. Um, I, I was very impressed by your two speeches, so now I'm uh, a little bit shy. Um, just to sum up, there are a few big differences between France and obviously uh, Spain and Greece. We didn't suffer the same uh, harsh austerity measures. We, we suffer from austerity, but the measures uh, that took place in, in, uh, in Spain, uh, expelling uh, more than 200,000 people from their house, homes, or in, in Greece, uh, cutting the pensions by 20 and more percent, uh, it's very, very different. And we don't have the, um, in these two countries, as you said, uh, a democracy is not brand new, but it's 40 or 50 years um, after the dictatorship, and in France, there is not this memory, and it might be a part of the explanation why the National Front, the extreme right, um, is so strong uh, now. But we have common points with also with UK, and I, I, I would I would say that our democracy is broken. Like people don't participate, and especially. Uh, uh, if, if you speak about diversity, they don't basically have the right to vote. Um, uh, uh, even though they pay taxes, they can't, um, they can't vote. And okay, let's go. <laughs> Thank you very Can much. I have a few go minutes? On, on. Uh, um, and the democracy is broken also because of the institutional system. Uh, we just had uh, elections in the UK. The Green Party made about 1.3 million, maybe, votes, something like that. And they got one seat. And the Conservative Party, they made 10 times the same share, like 10, 11 million votes. Yeah, yeah so t 10 times. And they got 330 seats. Yeah, yeah good for you. <laughs> But uh, it's not really, really um, fair, you would, you would agree. And we have the exact uh, same problem in France, where 40% of the votes of 2012, uh, if you add, uh, you should not add, but you, you can add uh, voices from votes for Modem, uh, Mélenchon, and Le Pen, I it's around 40%, and it, they have no, no MP, or maybe two, out of 577. And it is one big uh, problem. On the inverse, I guess that in, the, in, the, in Spain and in uh, Greece, y you have a better uh, representative kind of system. To, 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 to add agree. to this, uh, that, that's I mean, it, it's, it's a big issue. I mean, if you it's vote. It's a major issue. If I mean, 71% of French don't consider themselves as living in a democracy. It's a major issue. Yeah. Um, and if you, you, you were talking about disruption, I don't know what, I mean, I, I'm in a kind of dilemma. Uh, I'm a spokesperson for the French Green Party and I, I, I'm very proud of it, uh, of the ideas we, we promote, but I have no idea. Uh, it's a big dilemma. Should we go for something like uh, Syriza, like a coalition of old parties um, going after one straight uh, and s straightforward, simple uh, agenda, cut the austerity. That's what they, they brought to power. Or should we go for total disruption and create something new from scratch, like Podemos? I, I really don't know. I'd like to, to, to get your... Do, do, your do you think a but grassroots we are movement is possible in France? I mean, we had this weird experience of the uh, Sixth Republic uh, movement 
who was basically an old, very old political party rebranding itself as a fake grassroots thing uh, and killing any hope of a real grassroots thing like Podemos. Uh, uh, yeah, you think grassroots the, the is possible in France? Yeah, it is. And I, I, I totally disagree with your um, point of view that nothing is happening in France. The only problem is that it's not connecting with politics. I mean, I see a lot of people doing uh, creative st stuff, but in their own, you know, region, local, local, local stuff. Yeah, or, or national point, but they're not connecting. And that's a, a, big, uh, a big concern for me. I mean, uh, I would like uh, we share ideas and uh, collaborative ideas uh, to be promoted, but we need you guys. Uh, so to answer the question, open government and participative practice push for renewable political movement and parties, well, you don't push enough. <laughs> you should try. Uh, you said get involved, but yeah, get involved whatever the, the party or the, the approach or the method, but just get involved, uh, do something. And it, uh, it's, your, it's your responsibility. Um, th three different examples. Uh, you said about Société Générale, the, the bank. Uh, it's true, it's a, it's a massive scandal, and uh, it's only the, the tip of the iceberg that is coming out. Uh, the big question is, they uh, got uh, 2 billion euros from the uh, taxpayers, and nobody said it was a problem. So what I did, wh where is it? Yeah, no. Oh. Yesterday, it was a general assembly, and it, 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 costed me, it cost me uh, 30 euros to buy a share, and uh, to be able to, to ask the question to, to, the, to the CEO. Well, I wasn't the only one. So we could have been a little bit more, of course. And uh, it, it costs nothing to change, to, to switch from bank. Another, uh, another example, and this, this time we were uh, more numerous, we have this bill on massive surveillance that is coming uh, uh, in France. Uh, it, it's like the Patriot Act. What? And in UK, yeah, it's the, the Patriot Act replica, uh, but with 40, 14 years uh, later after the, the United States. And um, we created something li like a, um, a war room. So we, we created the tools with uh, La Quadrature du Net and uh, Amnesty International and so on, uh, so that citizens could call the MPs and say, well, you should not vote for this. And we managed in, uh, in only uh, a few hours to call uh, 266 MPs. Yeah, and, and the Prime Minister uh, outed that as an unacceptable pressure from the people yeah. toward representative. And the law passed. So, so you see why your democracy is broken. I mean, if you're calling your MP just to say, well, at least explain me what you're going to vote tomorrow, and the Prime Minister says, uh, it's a pressure. We, we don't have the same definition of pressure or we don't have the same definition of uh, democracy. And one last thing, uh, example. Um, so I'm a regional MP and we vote a lot of money for, for uh, economic development. Um, if, I, if I explain to you that we, we gave 60,000 euros uh, to help companies uh, create addiction to video games um, for children, I'm sure you would say, well, what did you do? So that's what happened. The company of the video games asked for 60,000 euros so that they could work with a neurologist uh, to develop addiction uh, to, you know, the, the, they call it freemium. It's video games. At first, it's few. Uh, I've, been <laughs> I've been touched by that. Um, it at, at first it's, it's, it's free, and then it gets um, expensive when you are addicted to it. And so the region, I mean, we fight, we fought about against this. But I'm pretty sure that if the report, the decision, was public before, uh, we could have won this small battle. Uh, but we lost because nobody uh, understood, nobody was aware of this uh, decision. And we are asking for the report, for this, uh, this decision to, to come public. But, I mean, in the institu institution, but we are alone. So we need you guys, actually. And we need to find a way to connect these um, two circles that are really separate the uh, participa practice 
and the political movement or the parties or the uh, activists and everything. And we, we need to find a way to connect this. Thank you, Julia. Uh, a quick question among, uh, for three of you, and then we'll take questions from the audience. Um, there is obviously a, a, a huge gap between the poll results and the representation of this poll result within any kind of l democratic assembly. Um, in all of our country, there's a huge difference, huge difference. Uh, do you think, really quick answer, uh, is this sustainable on the long term, Colvar? Um, I, I want to tackle this question head on, right? So you mentioned about representation with relationship to number of votes. Yeah. yeah, so for the Green Party. And you actually have raised a really interesting question about Green Party and Green politics. When a party becomes political, it has to make compromises and it has to start being everything. And that's very difficult for a movement like the Green Movement because then it has to start having decisions on everything which may not be consistent. So I think you really need to decide, are you activists or are you political? And that's, that, that's one question. But the question on representation, I'll just go on the question of representation. Well, let, let, because you provide let, pressure let's to... Let's representation. Yeah. We'll, we'll have yeah, a debate we'll, about that because you have... You apply as activists pressure on politicians and they will change. We change because the green movement says things and we see pressure and politicians change. But when the green movement becomes political, it can't then bring that same kind uh, of... Let's pressure. get back to representation. Yeah. The Sorry, on, of representation. on the representation question. All right. <laughs> on the representation question, we did have a referendum in the UK to change this representation method. It was about uh, alternative vote, uh, proportional representation, the amount of vote you get, the amount of representation you get in the House of Commons. And people voted no, they didn't want that. But also, we have to say that when you talk about the numbers, we're showing numbers, but we're asking a different question when we look at those numbers. When we ask people to vote in their constituency, sometimes they know that, okay, there's going to be an overwhelming support for party X, but I'm frustrated, so I'm going to register my vote for Party Y as a protest vote. As I know that Party Y is not going to win, but as a protest vote, I'm going to vote for them. So that is the basis on which people are voting. Sometimes they're showing their protest, not wanting that leadership, but a protest. Yeah, so I give you an example. Apart from the Green Party... Uh, we uh, have wait, wait a minute. You're no. telling me that basically you're, you're taking into account that if people vote for this party, this is a protest, we shouldn't really take care of it. No, well, like, they it voted It should for be dimmed as a result into the representa political representation. What they're saying is, we're going to vote for this party on the basis we know that they are not actually going to potentially be in power. So, for example, UKIP. There's a party called UKIP in the, U in the United Kingdom. It's a right of very right party, right-wing party. Not like the National Front, but between the National Front and the centre-right. Um, and they got four million votes almost, but only one MP. Because only in one area did people actually vote in the volume to say we actually want an MP. In the others, they came second or third with a certain number of votes. Now, when you so add that all up... To sum it up, because we yeah. really have to do quickly, do you think, at least in the UK, this is sustainable? I think it will be tweaked as we go along, but we are now entering an era where people understand that we can have coalitions in parties because we just had a coalition, we don't have one now. That has changed the dynamic in UK politics. Mm. So people now understand that politics can be more diverse in the way political parties work together. Even the Green Party, like you were saying, about whether it joins a coalition, there is the potential for that now to reoccur in British politics, so the model will evolve further. Oh, but no, I don't think it, it will change. In British politics, Parliament has the real power. We don't have this here. Uh, Mario, uh, what do you think? So I am so shocked about um, this uh, message that uh, in France is uh, nothing happening. I, I'm really shocked by, by, by this uh, uh, message. Uh, in 2011, in uh, Spain was happening nothing. And suddenly, uh, we are where we are. So uh, I have point to four lessons. I think these four lessons are perfectly applicable to uh, the France uh, context. So first lesson is... Um, Go from uh, collective, uh, collaborative economy to collaborative politics. So I think really that here in this place are the base for organizing a big uh, rising of the uh, French uh, population for uh, occupying the city. So we share I think a, a, a revolutionary really platform. I think it's really here. 
because here are the people who are experts in collective uh, and collaborative uh, uh, dynamics. So first thing is just think that you already know the method and you already have the uh, expertise about to how to make uh, people collaborate. Just uh, 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 drive this into uh, collective uh, co and collaborative uh, politics. Second lesson, don't sell it as uh, collaborative uh, practice, as innovation, as something very fancy. Se sell it just a, a much more simple way. Like as I say, Wikipedia, an encyclopedia, very easy uh, metaphor. It's about just uh, 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 people covering their basic needs. It's about uh, uh, human rights. It's not about uh, getting super fancy and very innovative. Don't make a very complex uh, uh, message, but a message that connect with people uh, basic needs. Third, get TV back, control uh, the means, make a TV online uh, make it popular, uh, spread it through peer-to-peer -peer communication, and make sure that you control certain uh, uh, means. And third, find a, a leader that knows to communicate very well, and a truly leader that has been connected to social mobilization struggles for the past uh, uh, 15 years. Someone who has been in the uh, uh, helping and organizing for making sure everybody has health and everybody has house. So this is uh, uh, someone that might be middle class, but know very well what is the situation of the people that has been highly affected by the crisis, and who is just trying to survive. It. And in France, there is ma many people like this. And so, uh, okay, a leadership of middle class and uh, like us, but connect with uh, uh, the, the, the people who is in a, uh, without job, uh, everyone, anyone in his family, or we, we, who is risking to, don't have a house, or uh, this kind of situation. And they have the key, they might look uh, poor, but they have the key to change the political system and make a collaborative uh, uh, democracy for all of us, and a commons for all of us. So you really have the key for doing it. Thank you. Uh, Julien, uh, we're going to conclude with you. Uh, do you think this gap between uh, the poll results and the, the assembly in terms of representation is sustainable in France? I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman, guys. Uh, you have, and you have three minutes to answer. Yeah, you have no more. One minute? Good. Good. Uh, yeah, but... Okay. So in one minute, uh, just to say that you, you should not confuse green movement and green party and check the agenda and you will see you can have a green view on uh, uh, foreign affairs uh, or on, on tax uh, system and so on. Um, just also to be uh, to say that I'm really sad that uh, you say you should choose between ele being elected and being an activist. Uh, it, it should be uh, a common sense that uh, or elected officials should represent and act for us. It means sometimes being an activist to fight uh, lobbies. And just to answer your question, no, it's absolutely not uh, sustainable. I'm half elected because there was a 50% turnout at the election I was elected uh, in 2010. And um, right now we voted for a, a left agenda, François Hollande, and is ap applying basically, is uh, making the, the, the more or less same measures uh, at the, the right policies. It's exactly what happened in, uh, in Spain with Zapatero in the end of this term, and it's exactly what happened in Greece uh, with... Um so final word of conclusion, do you have hope for something similar to what's happening in Spain, happening in France? Oh, w we have no choice because it's, it's not sustainable, and if you're uh, not doing or uh, inventing anything, well, the right and the far right wing um, will, will win, and uh, it will be a nightmare. So we, we have to work. Happening to us. Right? Thank you all. And uh, well, uh, have well, a nice lunch. Uh, I'm, uh, <laughs> could we? No, no, no question. Three words. No, uh, I guess. Uh, no, sorry, no question. Uh, okay. Yeah, there's so sun outside. We'll be outside if you want to ask us any questions. Let's build our democracy. <laughs> Thank you.